Okay, hey everybody, Guy with that KiltedGuyVideos.com. And what we're going to show you today is how to finish a recessed joint and a butt joint when you're doing drywall. And uh, we're going to show it on this little mock-up we have right here because we are on a job and it's hard to see the white mud on the white wall. So we've created this little dark backdrop for you. And we're going to show you that next. Hey, thanks for stopping by again. And for today's video, I'm gonna show you how to finish a couple of different, the common types of joints, which is a recess joint and a butt joint. And the difference is basically that a recess joint looks like in this example here, you'll see, I took this little picture showing how the, the edge, the long edge of the drywall is recessed slightly. It just tapers off and that way when you put the two recessed edges together you get this little trough like you see here and the tape fits into that and you don't have to do as much work to finish it. Whereas a butt joint is any time you take two non-recessed edges, put them together, that is considered a butt joint in this example here. And with a butt joint what happens is because there's no recess you put the tape on there now you created a little bit of hump you put some mud on it, you created more of a hump, so you have to finish it totally differently. And like I said in the preview, what we did is we painted some sheetrock a darker color because I find that on these videos when I put basically white mud on a more or less white wall, it's hard for you guys to see it. So I think you'll be able to see it better this way with the, it's basically a yellowish white mud going on this dark background. So I've gone ahead and done the prep work here which is we put the mesh tape in place. Now you can use paper tape. We just did this for quickness and I do this on a lot of repairs. Be sure and watch our video about paper tape versus mesh tape. And I'll put a link to that at the end of this video that you can click on and you'll see the difference between them. But for now, let's just go with this. Now you got three options, three or four options here on how you can do this. We have a six inch knife, this is an eight inch knife, a 10 inch and a 12 inch. And basically in drywall finishing, you start with a slightly narrower knife and work outward to the bigger knives. And it, it, again, it depends on what you're doing. But in this instance, as you saw in the example, we only have to cover a little bit. This six inch, for example, spans from one side of the recess to the other. But I don't use a six inch and one reason is you put this on and then you go to feather it and wipe it off. It's just real easy to wander a little bit and you end up with leaving all these edges and you might dig a little bit out where you shouldn't. So we want to span a little bit further than that recess. So as a minimum, I would recommend an eight inch knife, but if you're trying to economize, you can get by with a 10 inch knife and then go up to a 12 inch knife. Uh, I normally, and I think, a lot of finishers these days, and yes, I did bend my knife. Okay, I dropped my knife earlier, and it appears that I bent it. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna go ahead and use the 10 inch knife. These knives tend to be very uh, fragile, so don't drop it, it fell off my bucket earlier. If it bends the corner, you gotta try and straighten it out, and can be a bit of work. So we're gonna go ahead and do a 10. And that's actually how we normally do it. A lot of guys will start with a 10 and move up to a 12. And then I'm gonna show you basically how I normally do it. And then I'll kind of go over it again and do it in a slightly different method. So let's go ahead and spread the mud out. Now we're trying to get basically even coat on here. Okay, now that's how quickly I do it, but I've done this a million times. So now I'm gonna wipe this off and slow it down a little bit, but you can see where the recess ends up being. It shows you. And if you put my six on there, you can see it does span it, but barely. That's why you don't really wanna use this because if you go a little bit off, you're gonna end up wiping mud out of the recess. So 
Um, that just demonstrates what it should look like and I think it works well on this darker background. Okay, now I'm gonna go over it just a little bit slower. I'm gonna try and have a separate video on knife techniques, but let's just cover some basics here. When you're running your knife and you're coating something like this, you generally want a pretty heavy load of mud. You don't wanna try doing this a little bit, a little bit at a time. And then the angle that you hold your knife is important too. The more you stand it up, the more you're gonna wipe it off. The more you lay it down, the more you'll leave behind. But the more you lay it down, the more you likely you are to leave edges to a degree. So it's really a touch and a feel that's probably gonna take you some practice. And then as you put it on, you generally start out with the knife standing up a little bit more and as you go, I'm gonna exaggerate it here, but you just start laying it down as you go because you're depleting the mud that's on the knife. Another thing to point out is most eyewallers that I know of, their knives have a bit of a set to it. And I should mention this is my backup knives. These aren't my favorite. We get a feel for knives. These uh, are my backup because I'm on a secondary job here, but the knife, you may not be able to see it on the video, but this one has a curve. They all should have a little bit of a curve. If they're dead flat, you tend to dig in more with these edges and have more edge problem. So you want, okay, you imagine that curve is this way, you want that against the wall like that. Because if you put it here, then these edges tend to dig in to your mud and leave a lot of these corners, I should say, dig in and you leave a lot more edges. So let's just do this kind of slow. You can do it two ways. You can just start from right here and start spreading, or you can do like I did earlier and start from there. But basically you start pushing with some decent force and slowly start laying your knife down. And if you see you get a void or a light spot, you can drag back through the mud, pull a little bit off over there, and transfer it down the path, basically. Um, and a lot of times when I see that, I just quickly slap another one on there, but I'm showing you that you can, let's say you put it on too heavy over here and too light right there. You can pick some of that mud up and then lay it back down over here a little bit. So once you get it on there and you feel like you got it on relatively even, then take your knife and you're gonna feather the edges. And to do that, you tilt it and then push. These bend pretty good. And you just wanna get that outer edge knocked off like that. And then come and do the other side the same way, just the opposite. Once you get it feathered, like this right here could stand to be feathered just a little bit more. Doesn't have to be all the way down to that recess, but. Then you take your knife and lay it down most of the way and again, decent pressure and just push and pull across. Now, if you get some edges like this, I would suggest don't worry about it. What I see, the biggest problem with people trying to do this themselves, I've seen other videos too where they kind of put it on and, and kind of get it all Sloppy, I, don't, I can't hardly do it. I've done it right so many times that it's hard for me to fake putting it on wrong, but then maybe they get it feathered and then they either wipe off too much or leave too much behind. So you want it to where it's actually a slight crown, meaning your mud goes slightly past the recessed joint just slightly because it's going to shrink. If you're using hot mud, it'll shrink less, but if you're using regular all-purpose type joint compound, it's going to shrink. And so you want to allow for it to shrink down a little bit. If you got it perfectly flat the first time, then um, you can see my, it's not perfectly flat because my knife will take some off. If it was perfectly flat, then it would shrink too much, it would go too deep in there, you'd have more work to do the second time. So I think that basically covers a recessed joint again. 
if we were going to leave this, we'd put that mud on there, feather it back off. And we call that good. And the reason I say don't worry about these edges is you are going to sand it lightly between coats and that'll take care of those. And you're mainly worried about sanding on the final coat. So get it to there, let it dry. It's gotta be thoroughly dry. And then you're ready for your second coat. And on the second coat, you basically do the same thing, but you put it on a little bit lighter. And then you'll just come back and sand it when it's all dry. And I'll shoot a quick video on sanding, but you're basically looking to sand off the edges and lap marks. And a lap mark, see if I can exaggerate a lap mark here. Oh, let's see. That's an exaggerated lap mark. So that's where one pass goes into the other, which often happens when you have corners in a room. So you're looking to sand off those the outer edges, you're not looking to sand off voids. Voids, you'll put more mud on. You're only looking to sand off the high points. If you got too much mud on, you may have to sand it a little bit, but you can leave a slight crown when it's done. And so the outer edges, the high points, and flatten it a little bit if you need to. And if you got any waviness, like, let's just exaggerate you can sand across it and it will level out the waviness. So that's it for a recessed joint. Stay tuned and we'll show you how to do a, a butt joint next.